cool kids. Fuck the kids? Yeah. Now, when I say who's the master, you say no no. What is up guys? Showing up the king here, back with another video, and today, you know, you know your boy's back. I'm doing something different. Well, not actually different. I'm doing a blast from the past. I will be reviewing the first three episodes of Peacock's original series, Bel Air. I know, if, unless you guys have been longtime subscribers, I have not reviewed a TV show in many, many years. So, again, w one of the things that I started my channel off with and, like, how I got my first 500 subscribers was doing anime manga and tv show reviews like my biggest some of my biggest videos were from my true blood reviews back when it was originally airing on hbo and um i also used to do young justice you know i reviewed bleach naruto and one piece as the mangas were running those are the kind of things that i originally did with my channel but you know it kind of evolved and i started doing the different things but i saw this um show and i was hearing about this show and i just Something just really made me want to review it. And the first episode premiered today. I just got finished binge watching the first three episodes. So I decided that, hey, why not? I'm going to come on here and I'm going to talk about it. So, you know, I'm going to be reviewing the first three episodes of Bel Air. And I'm going to let you guys know from my perspective, should you be watching this show or should you just hand it off somewhere? <laughs> All right. So first things first, let's talk about reboots in general. So. Reboots in general have been kind of hit or miss. You know, we've had shows like, you know, the new Saved by the Bell reboot. You know, they've done the Wonder Years with a black family. You know, they've done like Roseanne had a reboot. Um, everybody's doing a reboot. Some good, some bad. Again, like I said, Fuller House seems to have its, found its footing. Um, you know, we've had bad shows like I Know What You Did Last Summer to try to do that. And I tried watching that show, but it was just so, so bad that I just had to... I had to drop that show but again Bel Air was something I was interested in because again I used to watch the show when it was premiering in the 90s again that was much watch TV especially in black families you know you had Bill Cosby show you had Martin you had um, Living Single New York Undercover Fresh Prince of Bel Air it was you know in Living Color like that was that was our moment was when you know the 90s was the moment for black families to get their shine on television and um bel air prince, fresh prince of bel air was no different again i love the show i'm actually more of a martin fan over fresh prince but i still watched fresh prince of bel air as well so did this show need to exist and honestly i'm going to say yes i watched the first few episodes and i'm not even gonna wait till the end to tell you i actually love this show uh i actually kind of knew I was going to like this show once I saw the trailer because once the trailer premiered and we figured out that it's not going to be a beat for beat redone, redo of the original show I knew I wanted to see this because again I knew that if they were going to just do like a whole sitcom style and just recast that it was going to be doomed to fail but I love the way that they decided to take a more serious approach to it because again you know fun fact Will Smith when he was originally doing their Fresh Prince of Bel-Air he used to talk about how he wanted the show to have more adult themes in it because, again, it helps him from being stale. And, again, it kind of helped him because he wanted to also use this show as a vehicle to jump off his acting career, which it ended up doing. Um, but he always was advocating for having more serious tones in the show. Case in point, why we got those little iconic episodes where, you know, he's talking about why his father doesn't love him. You know, we all remember that. We remember the episode where, you know, they get robbed and then Will ends up taking a bullet for Colton. And again, you know, things of that nature. Now, speaking of um, Carlton, speaking of, the, let's talk about the cast. That's how I want to do this. So what I want to do is I want to break down, this is going to be spoilers. So again, I'm going to talk about the episodes and I'm going to skim through the first three episodes. But this first video, I just kind of want to talk about the casting. Did they nail it? You know, how does the chemistry work between everybody? And then I'll talk about the highlights from each of the, the three episodes. So first thing that I want to do is I want to talk about uh, Jabari Banks, who plays Will. And I have to say, hats off to you, buddy. I mean, dude, he killed that role as Will. Like, I don't care what anybody says. 
he is Will Smith. He is Will. He embodies the character, the swagger, the, you know, the mannerisms, everything, right down to how he says, Uncle Phil, or, you know, Aunt Viv, like, how he's interacting with the cousins, just like his Philly swag, you know, how he says John's, like, again, I'm originally from um, D.C., born and raised, and, you know, while we kind of emulate a little bit of that, you know, that, that West Philly thing, we don't say John's, we say joint, you know, that joint is tight, you know, things like that, that's kind of how we did it in, you know, D.C., so when I hear this kind of like talk and things of that nature from from um, Jabari, I it it screams West Philly, you know. It like again, like I I see it. His his acting is on point. Like I don't know if he's originally from Philly, but his acting is on point, in in, in my opinion. So again, the story kind of takes place and it takes all the the best parts from the original show and it expands on it. So what I mean by like. In the original Fresh Prince of Bel Air, you know, we know the story. You know, he got into a fight in his, on a basketball court, had to end up moving to um, Bel Air. But in the original show, we don't actually get the full details of whatever happened. We just know he, you know, he got in one little fight and his mom got scared. You know, we know the story. Um, but in this, it actually takes a, a, a more serious tone because what ends up happening is, is, you know, Will and his friend Trey. And again, another fun fact Trey was originally in. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air as well, and in that, in the original Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, he later comes to, to um, Bel-Air as well, and then Trey ends up dating um, Hillary. That used to be like her first real love interest in the show, so whether or not they end up doing that in this show, I don't know, because in this, I know um, Will is still in school, and I believe Hillary already dropped out of college, so she would be much older than Trey, so I don't know if they're going to actually end up doing that as a storyline and and anyway once we talk about it will something ends up happening to trey but we'll we'll talk about that later so i definitely think jabari banks is a perfect casting for will again like i said he emulates his swagger to a t the silver tongue the the everything the mannerisms of, of, of will smith's character he nails it so again chef's kiss fantastic job um, also, who I actually really, really like is uh, Coco Jones, who plays Hillary Banks. First off, that's a fine-ass black woman, boy. I mean, talk about black excellence. Like, the casting in general for the show is, is immaculate, but that's a fine black woman, boy. Mm. We, we, we need more like it. So, <laughs> her character is actually different than the Hillary that we got in the show, because the Hillary that we got in The Fresh Prince... She was very, she was ditzy, you know, she was stupid, and they decided to go a completely different route, which I actually do applaud them for, because again, it, it looks like they're making a concerted effort to not make this into like a menstrual show. They're actually trying to get a realistic look into a successful black family that also has issues and things of their past coming back to, to haunt them. So in this show, Hillary is a um, food influencer, and, you know, she's amassing her, her following. She's actually a really good cook. She actually does the cooking for the family in the show, uh, which brings me to another character that I want to talk about is uh, Jeffrey, who is played by Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, because I cannot pronounce his last name. I think it's like uh, Ankenbola, something like that. Again, I'm probably butchering it, but it is what it is. Jimmy, a.k.a. Jeffrey, he is the housemaster, is what they kind of call him when when he's introduced um i don't know what he actually does in the, in the show like he says he's the house master but you don't actually see him doing anything other than hanging out with phil and just sitting around with the family in the morning because again like i said he's not the butler because hillary has done all the cooking that we've seen in the show thus far they don't have a maid that comes in and cleaning we don't see him cleaning so, like, the only time that we see him is when he's, like, either hanging out with Phil, drinking, or playing pool, or he's sitting around with the family doing breakfast. Like, he's basically like a family member, in my opinion. He doesn't actually manage anything in the house. Maybe they'll expand upon that later on, but, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he hasn't really done much as far as, like, you know, housemaster roles. Um, also, uh, Akira Ak Akabara, that's the young lady who plays uh, Ashley. Again, in the show, she's 12, but she's literally done nothing the first three episodes. You know, she's she kind of reminds me of um, the, the chick from Family Matters who went upstairs and just disappeared. Like, she shows up, like, maybe once or twice for breakfast, 
And other than her initial um, introduction when she first meets Will, she's literally done nothing the first few episodes. Now, obviously, that will probably change later on. Uh, but as of right now, she's literally done nothing. <laughs> so one other interesting thing that they did with the casting is is that Lisa, Simone Joy, uh, she is actually been introduced in episode one. Now, again, she is another person they pulled over from the original Fresh Prince. And we all know that in Lisa also end up playing one of Will's love interests later on in the series, and they actually ended up getting engaged, but he ended up getting called off at the last minute because Lisa didn't know she wanted to be married to Will. So they actually introduced her in um, episode one, and the plot twist is that she actually used to date Carlton, and now she's actually starting to show feelings for Will. There's like conflict between the two of them because of that, but again, we'll talk about that a little later. Now, um, also we have um, Uncle Phil, and Uncle Phil is played by Adrian Holmes. Again, Phil, fantastic casting. Now, I know there might be some people upset because, you know, he's not like, you know, the big Uncle Phil. And honestly, I don't think he needed to be. Like, I, I, I think they needed to do enough that they were hiring the right person and he had the right gravitas in order to play that character. And I definitely think that um, Adrian does a fantastic job playing Uncle Phil. Um, again, I love the little serious undertones because he has a lot going on right now where he's trying to become a new DA. And, you know, we, we kind of have like that little a little tiny hint of um, political intrigue in the show, which they can probably exp expand upon later on. But if there is enough there to uh, warrant some extra follow up, because, again, I love the little um, the Uncle Phil storyline as well. It basically looks like this show is giving everybody something to do except for Jeffrey and um, Ashley. <laughs> so. Let's talk about Aunt Viv, who is uh, played by Cassandra Freeman. Again, fantastic casting. She's dark-skinned. She's beautiful. I mean, like, they did not... They handled that black excellent thing. I love how all the characters are mostly chocolate. The only person that's, like, lighter skin is Will, which which makes sense. But everybody else in that family is, like, a dark brown, and I, and I love it. Even, even um, uh, Carlton who is played by uh, Ollie uh, Shulton. Now, Ollie, again, perfect casting in my opinion. Like, he fits the role of Carlton to a T. He has that preppy look. He has that, like, sincere dickhead attitude, but you can also tell that there's something underneath that that is just eating away at him, and, you know, his, his need to be perfect, his need to try to be his own man is kind of like eking out, and then having Will come in and take his shine is starting to bother him. Because that's what the first three episodes are kind of talking about, is this, this beef between Will and Carlton. Because Will automatically gets in, he, he's automatically connected to Hillary, to Ashley. Like, he takes to them perfectly. The only one that he kind of butts head with at the beginning is Carlton. And kind of for good reason. Because one thing, that, let's talk about episode one. Now that we've kind of talked about all the main players. Oh, also, I, I apologize. Uh, Jordan Jones, he plays Jazz. And we get introduced to Jazz when Will gets off the plane. Jazz picks him up. He's like some like high-class Uber guy. You know, they kind of make friends, and that's kind of how their relationship starts. So I'm pretty sure that's going to end up developing later on in the series. So I just wanted to be aware of that as well. So um, the beef between Will and Carlton kind of starts over Lisa because like I said, Lisa used to date um, Carlton and now she's kind of, there's automatic sparks when she meets Will. Now um, Will does know up front that Carlton and her used to date. So I do, I did find it funny because what ends up happening is, is that through the course of the first episode, you know, Will gets invited to a um, Carlton invites Will to a beach party uh, but before that, he tries to introduce him to his friend. Um, Will walks into the locker room, and I believe the guy's name is Connor. I mean, he's played by Tyler Bernhardt. And you can see Tyler singing um, singing, singing the, the N-word with great zest. Like, he's dropping the, the, the N-bomb like like it ain't nothing. And, you know, Will kind of steps up to him and is like, yo, you can't fucking say that word. And then, you know, Connor kind of comes up and is like, you know, gets up in his face and then, you know, you know, that starts the beef between, you know, um, Carlton and Will. So um, that then moves on to the party where Carlton sees Will dancing with Lisa. He makes the connection that, oh, he's trying to move in on my girl. 
he's already hopped up on alcohol and drugs, so he kind of goes and pushes Will into the pool. And then we find out that Will can't swim. He does kind of hint at it when he is checking out Lisa at the swim trials earlier in the episode. So she ends up saving him, but then Will gets out and they start a fight. And that's kind of how episode one ends with Will knocking out Carlton and beating the hell out of him. And then they that beef ends up going on and it ends up escalating later on in the other two episodes. So, um, but the one thing I wanted to talk about in regards to Will is he does have a role to play in that beef because if you knew that your cousin was dating Lisa, why would you be pushing up on her? I mean, he it's not like he kind of asked why they broke up. And again, I know he doesn't technically owe his cousin anything, but, you know, that's family. You should definitely have been staying away from Lisa, especially if you didn't know why they broke up or what was going on. And you can clearly say they were just talking, but it definitely looked like there was more than talking, in my opinion. So, again, I definitely think that Carlton had a reason to kind of flip off the handle, but for him to push Will into the pool, that uh, he had that ass whooping coming to him. So, uh, you know, that that is that. So, in the second episode, we kind of figure out that Will is, you know, started to, to discover his own swagger in the actual episode. He ends up meeting a new friend on who's actually on the basketball team. Will himself actually gets himself on the basketball team at the tryouts, but then there's also this drama where Connor wants to get back at Will for beating him up, and he ends up slipping drugs into Will's backpack. Now, that if I had to talk about a negative, I didn't really like how they handled that whole scenario because I felt like it was introduced in the beginning of the episode, but it was also cleared up right by the end of it, and it basically ended up... I liked the way they resolved it because I liked how Phil and Viv were able to go to the school and like push their weight around and kind of use their privilege to kind of snap at the um, principal and be like, because the principal was ready to you know, suspend Will and put him in trouble. And they hadn't even looked at the security cameras. So once, you know, Phil and Vivian figured that out, they were like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? Y'all didn't even look at the cameras? So what ends up happening is is that um, Carlton tells Connor, look, my family don't play. They're going to figure out what happened. We got to fix this. So they end up um, putting the blame on some random person who doesn't even go to Bel Air as the person that slipped the stuff into Will's backpack, which makes zero sense but it's enough to get the charges dropped and he's able to kind of go on about his business. So just to me, it felt like it was just something that was introduced to just add drama to the show, but it was just cleared up so fast and there was no real consequences on either side. So I just didn't really care for that one particular um, scenario. So anyway, um, that episode goes on, you know, and at the end of that episode, Will finds out that Trey gets shot over in Philly because again you know he's still having that issue with the guy that is trying to hunt down Will and again I know I didn't talk about it too much in detail but again you know like I said in the first episode Will on the playground there's a gangbanger that he's been um having was having problems with he ends up putting a gun on the guy they all end up getting arrested but because Will gets released first the guy assumes that Will somehow snitch which is also a huge plot hole and I do want to mention that because I'm like, they both got locked up at the same time. They both were in the same jail cell at the same time, the entire time. And then just because we, you saw Will get out, when did he have time to snitch? Like, that's the thing that was just like, there was irking me. Because I'm like, you're trying to call this man a snitch. How did he snitch from the jail cell that he was in the same jail as you? How's he a snitch? Obviously, something else happened to get him out. But it definitely wasn't because he was being a snitch. But again, that was just a little small plot hole that just really irked me a little bit. But from that beef, that guy is looking for Will, but decided to take that out on his friend Trey, who ended up getting shot. It ended up being less serious than before. But I was also glad that they didn't do a um, TV trope where they were trying to say that um, Trey and Will now got beef. Because again, I think at the end of the day, I think Trey understood why Will had to go. Because Will would be dead if he went back to Philly. Just no ifs, ands, and buts about it. They had a they had a um they had a whole bag on his head like he was he'd have been taken out if he went back to Bel Air, so so now that we already mentioned Trey we mentioned the seriousness of the um thing episode three is kind of about you know Uncle Phil he had his own situation going on Hillary and her mom they have a whole situation going on where Hillary is uh, trying to become this food influencer 
but ends up is trying to find her own lane to do that. And I think I love the storyline that she has going on because they're doing a lot of introduction of like social media. So it's very current in what what's going on now in uh, social media. We also have Aunt Viv where she has her own little sub storyline where she used to be this famous artist, but then there's some controversy as to why she stopped. So we're going to figure out about that. We got Phil, you know, he's trying to run to be DA. So he has his own subplot. We already know about Will's subplot. You know, Carlton has his own situation going on where he's on drugs. He's also struggling because, you know, he's the captain of the cross team. And, you know, he has Will infringing on his his turf. And um, then we have Will. We have his whole situation going on. So everybody has their own subplots going on again, except for Jeffrey and uh, Ashley. But hopefully that will be remedied in uh, future episodes. So in episode three, uh, Carlton is, there's this, there's this game and, you know, they're supposed to be there for everybody. Will has his first game. He wins. And then Carlton's game is horrible. He actually ends up getting ejected. And then he walks in just in time to see Will shoot the winning game, um, the game thrower. And he wins the game. And, you know, his family is celebrating with him. It makes him feel even more inadequate. So that's just going to fuel more fire between Will and Carlton. Even though at that point, Will is already trying to make things better with Colton, but Colton is not seeing that right now. So that'll be another subplot that needs to be looked into uh, as well. And then finally, what ends up happening at the end of episode three is that the guy that, you know, Will got into that skirmish with sees the highlight from Will being in Bel Air. So now he knows that Will is in Bel Air. So now there's this other subplot that sees that, hey, will that guy either get some hitters out in L.A. to try to um, get at Will or is he going to go down there himself and try to handle that situation as well? So, again, I think that that could be something that puts Will and Carlton together and brings them together as a family. Because I don't think I see that subplot with him and the gangbanger lasting more than the first season. Either that guy's going to get taken out or something's going to happen that's going to bring them together closer as a family. Um, but what do I think of the show? I think it's an excellent show. I definitely think that it charts its own course in the history of just doing its own its own thing it definitely needs to exist i'm really glad and i really want you guys to go out and watch it um if i had to score this uh the first few episodes out of a 10 i'd give it a solid uh solid eight I, I, again like i said i really i felt intrigued for the first three episodes i liked enough of it if i had again any nitpicks again is with the uh, jeffrey character and ashley a character I really, really like the guy who plays Jeffrey. I just kind of want to see how his relationship with Will develops because in the original show, Jeffrey and Will had a lot of great chemistry together, and I like to see that in this show as well. And again, I want to see some more from Ashley. Again, I know right now they're focused on the younger, the older siblings, but I definitely want to see uh, Ashley be more than just a background character. But again, I want to know what you guys think. Comment in the section below, thumbs up the video. Um, this is Show Up the King, and I'll see you guys on Thursday to review episode four.